Well, that's sort of snow. A bit slushy and melting immediately, but... I've discovered a snow-related frunk problem. Oh, chilly fingers. So, we were going to go to a supercharger, but I don't want to do that because they don't have proper coffee and the battery was still quite cold because we'd only driven like 30 miles and it was two degrees out. And so all that basically adds up to a very slow charge rate. And if you're going to get a slow charge rate from a supercharger, then you might as well drive a little bit further and get a slow charge rate from an ecotricity pump. Because at least if you do that, you can have the coffee you want. The only slight problem is, it does mean we're definitely going to be here for a good old while. So that's where we're at with it at the moment. Need to get that minus 13% up to about 20%. So I might well wind up giving it a double zap on this Ecotricity charger. Run out of patience, we're going, we'll be fine, we get there with 22%, so stop session early. You know my number plate though, well it's not going to work for you then is it? Why don't you let me just go do it, I won't take a sack. Hey hey! So I figure we need to get up to about 75%, 70% and then we'll have plenty of power to get home once we've picked Jasper up. Missed you. Oh. I've just had a 15 minute power nap. I feel a lot better. Just put these in the car. Probably time for Jasper to have a little snooze. something it wasn't really my fault it just let right out at me and I do kind of have what I consider to be a fairly good reason for buying this London camera exchange it's second hand but it seemed like it was in good condition so and this is the reason why I bought it who remember my little Lumix the one that used to have fluffy ears well it's got a bit of an issue it kind of I've got twice as much, more than twice as much footage as, the, as was used in that. So by cutting out, I think the image stabilization in it is insufficiently quiet. I spoke to someone in a, a camera store and they told me that a, a Panasonic representative, I might add, they said that they didn't think it was right. I should think about returning it to Panasonic so that they can check it out and fix it or refund it, which sounds fine to me, except there's one small problem. This is the camera I actually wind up using the most because it's the smallest and easiest when you've got a small child. So whatever I was gonna replace that with, I had to get it before I could send that in. Let's have a look at what I replaced it with. It's a Canon. It's a Canon G7X. Awesome. This is also upside down. This is the camera that most vloggers seem to prefer. Now, this is actually the Mark 1 because it's second hand. The Mark 2s are basically a little bit like hen's teeth at the moment because there's a bit in them that's made by Sony and the Sony factory has had some earthquake troubles. I think that's that's how the Canon representative at this camera store described the situation. So I found this at a decent price second hand and thought, okay, 
What's the advantage of the Mark II over the Mark I? As it turns out, really not a huge amount. Nothing I would be willing to pay the extra for. I would love to do a proper unboxing, but uh, it's not in there anymore. And the reason it's not in there anymore is because I've actually been using it all day today. The only shots that haven't been taken with the Canon are the GoPro shots when it was just too wet and anything that wasn't properly waterproof was going to wind up getting broken. It also came with a case. Let's have a little look. I have micro muffed it up, of course. All cameras should come with micro muffs. What is wrong with camera manufacturers? So he's he's got a little sort of Mohican thing going on there. I think it's a pretty good camera. I'm, I have to say, so far, in the limited test that I've done, I'm really happy with it. Let me know what you think in the comments, but I'm, I'm pretty sure this is, after all, that's why all the other vloggers out there are using them. What I particularly like is there shouldn't be any clicking. It should just basically be non-clicky. Yeah, and the sound should be pretty good as well. That's what I'm hoping. The image isn't going to be as good as it would be on the Canon 70D, but that's because the Canon 70D is a whopping great DSLR. There are some pros and cons. One thing I did quite like about the Lumix, I'm a big fan of this. You can manually zoom, and because it's a manual zoom, you've got more creative control, but I'm not willing to put up with the dodgy sound. I do like being creative. Creative is good. Seems like quite a slow zoom. The autofocus is much better than it was in the Lumix. The Lumix's autofocus took ages to work out what it was focusing on, whereas this is pretty speedy in comparison. It's not as quick as, as the Canon 70D, but it's still pretty damn quick. This, I think, is gonna wind up being the camera that I use the most often, which is why I really should have got it to begin with. On the upside, by waiting a little while and getting a second-hand one, I got it for quite a bit cheaper. The image stabilisation seems like it's a bit better in this than it was in the Lumix, which is handy. The sound maybe is a little bit better. Obviously, the absence of the clicking is much, much better. You know, what did the Mark II have over this? Well, you could tilt the screen down a bit. That eh, really is not of any interest to me whatsoever. You could charge it by USB. That is of interest. But if you spend like 10 quid, you can get a second battery and that just fixes that whole problem. It does have one little problem, however. When you look at the bottom of the Lumix, you'll see that I basically keep a quick connect plate for the Joybee Gorilla Pod. And I put those on top of all of my tripods because it just makes life quick and easy. You see, with this one, I can get into the battery and the SD card without having to take the, the quick connect plate off. On this camera, however, the screw thread is right next to the door. So if there was a plate on there, that's a bit annoying. The whole purpose of this camera really is for it to be quick and easy to get out and use. And also, okay, not this one, because this is the big one from the um, Canon 70D, but the smaller one of these that I've got, it's really rattly. That's what was causing all the trouble with the GoPro Hero 5 the other day. Right, I have waffled on long enough. This is gonna be a nightmare to edit if I don't call it to an end right now. Soap's birthday is gonna be coming up in a, a couple of days, so it's important that I ensure that the editing is manageable. On that note, I hope you enjoyed today's blog post. If you have, remember to like it and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. You're still here. One other slightly annoying thing is when you're putting the new Canon into the case that came with it, the micro muffs kind of get sort of, I mean I like the case, but I like the micro muffs more. I mean they do fit, they just kind of, they get, they get pushed by the case, you know what I mean.